Hey everybody, it's Jen with Two Sister Bees. Welcome to the channel. So today, I'm going to put you in a better mood. No way. Yes way. And I'm gonna help you start a new habit that is not only good for you, but your entire family. Is this for real? Like for real, for real? No, for real. And I'm gonna make every goal that you have seem much more achievable. That's not possible. It is possible. And we're also going to save money and have potential to make even a little extra cash. Prove it. Challenge accepted. All of these things can happen by doing one thing. Living in a clutter-free environment. Wait, 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 don't click out. Remember what we just said. We wanna be in a better mood. We wanna start new habits that are good for me and my family. I really wanna meet my goals. Save money and possibly make more? By doing one thing, come on you guys, let me show you how to do it and why you should do it. And now you might be thinking, why should I listen to her? What does Jen know about organizing and decluttering and living in a clutter-free zone? Let me tell you. I took my family of four from a three bedroom, two bath home and moved us all into a 40 foot RV where we lived on and off, mostly on, for almost 10 years. And not only did we live in the RV, we lived in the RV comfortably and happy. That's the important part. But I need more. Oh, that's not enough for you? I also rented out my home as an Airbnb, and I had to get all of our personal belongings out of the way of the guests, and I did this without putting one thing into a storage facility. Ooh, impressive. Okay, do I have your attention now? Are you ready? Let's get started. Okay, so step one, you've gotta get the music going. That is one of the most important parts of this. You've gotta put something on that you can sing along to or even start dancing a little bit with. Gotta keep this fun or you're not gonna wanna do it. Put the music on, whatever it is that you like. Next, I want you to take a before photo or video. You are going to use this later on for two things. The first one is at some point while you're doing this, and I want you to be aware of this, you're going to look around at your mess that you've created because you've got everything out of cabinets and drawers and cupboards, and you're gonna think to yourself, what did I do? I call this the middle of the storm. You're in the eye of the hurricane. This is the pivotal moment where everything is going to shift and turn into your favor and you will start to notice things come together. So you're gonna need this photo when you get to the middle of the storm to remember what it looked like before and think about what it's going to look like after. The second thing you're gonna need that photo for is to get your family on board. Do, do, do I have to? You don't necessarily have to, no. But it is a good idea for things like their own rooms, the bathroom, the pantry, and the refrigerator. But we'll come back to this. I'd like you to start in the kitchen I feel like this is the hardest room in the house to get organized, but it has the biggest benefit. It's the heart of the home and everyone will notice your efforts if you start in the kitchen. But you can apply what I'm about to tell you to any space in your house. So I'm sure you've heard this before, but this is absolutely how you do it. You get your three piles going. You have your keep pile, your sell pile, and your donate pile. Before you get started, you always wanna have your boxes and your bags ready to go. So if you don't have any boxes, you can run to your grocery store or any other, Walmart is a great place. I've gotten so many boxes from Walmart. I would just kind of walk around as they're unpacking things and ask them, can I take those boxes? And they gladly give you all of the boxes they have on their cart. Don't buy boxes. As you're going through your kitchen, I want you to ask yourself, have I used this item in the last 60 days? Do I really need it? Why am I holding on to this? I, I, don't, I don't do that. Don't lie, some of you have sippy cups and your kids in the first grade. If you're holding on to an item and you just aren't sure whether or not you're going to use it, I want you to take a trick that I learned from The Minimalists. If you have not seen them, they are on YouTube, they have podcasts, they're amazing. What they did is they boxed up items that they weren't sure of. So go ahead and get a box and put these items in that box. Seal it up, and if you don't go into that box over the next 30 days to use that item, do you really need it? Also, you may not be a sell it type of person. April, the other half of Two Sister Bees, she is a get it out of the way person. She loads everything up on her husband's truck when she goes through her items and just gets rid of them. I'm more of a sell it person. 
So if you aren't sure which type you are, or you've never sold anything, don't worry, we're gonna circle back to selling your stuff in a little bit. This is the part where I need you to keep moving. Do not get stuck. When I'm going to do something like this, a huge purge in my house, I will stand in the doorway of the room and I will work from the right-hand side wall, the back wall, this wall, and then this one. It keeps me going and it keeps me from skipping the harder areas that I'd like to avoid. So if the worst area is on this wall, I don't have a choice. I've got to get that area cleaned out. For your donate items, as these boxes and bags fill up, put them in your car immediately. And your sell items have a temporary space ready to go, maybe in your garage, an office, an extra bedroom, somewhere where it's a little bit out of the way, but not too out of the way so you forget all about it. And doing these two things will keep you from feeling overwhelmed while you're in the middle of doing your work. Dump the gadgets. We've got the rice cookers, the Instapot, the air fryers, the new waves, the blenders, the mixers, toasters, toaster ovens, pressure cookers, slow cookers, electric presses, griddles, food processors, juicers. Dump them. Listen, you guys, marketing works. All of these products are meant to sell you a lifestyle, a version of ourselves that we all want, a healthier you, the meal planner you, the juicer or protein shake drinker you. These are all lifestyle ideas that companies know we look at and think, if only I had that Instapot, I would make dinner faster. If I had that juicer, I would drink my vegetables. Sometimes these things do add value and we really do use them. April loves her Instapot and uses it multiple times a week. I love my Nutribullet, but if you haven't used it in one year, it's okay, it might not be for you, just let it go. And these types of items take up the most space. And you know what this space can be used for? This is what we call prime real estate, your counter space and your easy to reach drawers and cabinets. So now for your keep items, the things you use daily, these things will need to be placed in an easy to get to location and in that same spot every single time. This is where we start to get excited because the progress is really starting to happen and you can see it. Now you wanna streamline your kitchen because then you will look forward to cooking. You will start to pack your own lunch and make your own coffee. This will help you save money and feel better. This is where I want you to reward yourself by doing things in your newly streamlined kitchen. Start having those family meals at your newly cleared off dining table. Make yourself a special coffee at your super cute coffee station. No new stuff, at least for a while. Bask in your minimalist glory and let it seep in. Now this is where you're going to take your after photo. Yay. If TikTok has shown us anything, it's that nothing motivates like some before and after photos or videos. So now that your family has actually seen you do it, they've gotten to have dinner at that nice table, they've been in the kitchen and they see everything that you've done and they're super proud of you. Now this is where we're gonna stay focused and keep your decluttered and organized kitchen from sliding back into the old habits. How, how do I do that? If you're out shopping and you see something you like, ask yourself, where will it go? Do I have a spot for this item? Probably not. What will you get rid of to offset what you're buying? Why would I do that? So you don't build up clutter again. Oh, right, 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 right. <laughs> Does it actually add value to my daily life? How often will I use this? Do I really need it or do I just want it because I've seen it on social media or I just like the idea of it? Every time you're leaving the kitchen, do a quick scan and see what you can take out of the kitchen that doesn't belong there and put it in its proper space. So now I wanna move on to the sell items for those of you who wouldn't mind putting a little work in and making a little extra scratch for it. I do, I do, I do, I do, I do. Selling your items right now, perfect timing, you guys. Spring is coming, the yard sales and flea markets are back on. Facebook Marketplace is always available, and you have Porch Pickup now, which is completely contact-free. You can just post your item and sell it while you're at work. You don't even have to be home for that. I like that. I like that a lot. 
Yard sales are easier because you don't have to actually move the items far and you can set up for days prior and be ready the morning of. Little side notes for yard sales, be aware of your community or your county requirements. Some require a permit, some only allow you to do it on certain times or days, and a lot of times you can only hang your signs in certain spots. So make sure you check with your community or county about their yard sale rules. And if you're doing a yard sale, make sure that you have change ready. You wanna have some bills and quarters, and you also wanna have boxes and bags for your customers. Your kids could also set up a little table while you're doing your yard sale and they could sell waters and maybe some cookies. My kids used to do that when they were little and they loved making extra cash. Now flea markets are a bit more work with getting the items there and setting them up, but you will have a steady flow of customers. While you're there, don't just sit in a chair, stand up, be engaging. Fine, fine. Smile at people and say hello. Keep folding and fixing your items to make them seem more appealing. Okay, so if you're gonna go the Facebook Marketplace route, first you wanna look at the competition in your area that has the same items. Check their prices, look at the condition, and base your price off of that. Second, you wanna take really good pictures. You wanna be in a well-lit area and have it be clean. Nothing in the background, nothing busy going on, just the item itself. It makes it look a lot better to a potential buyer. Measure, measure, measure. I cannot stress this one enough. I don't care what the item is, measure it and put the measurements in the description. Your description also should note any flaws and don't forget to highlight the good parts of your item. In the listing, you also want to add that they bring a truck or extra people to load if you're selling big, heavy items like furniture. And time is of the essence, you guys. Do not do any holds. First come, first serve. That's the rule. And you also wanna give a time limit on these items that you're listing. Say, after a week, maybe drop the price a little bit. After two weeks, just commit to donating if the item is not selling. Now it is time to decide what are you going to do with that extra cash you just made? Maybe you wanna get your Merge and Be Fund going. If you don't know what that is, click the link in the description below. We have a freebie printable for you guys. You save $10 at a time and when you're done, you will have your $1,000 emergency fund. It's a cute little tracker that my sister has made for you guys and it's available to everybody. Do you wanna pay down some of that debt? Heck yes. Get caught up on your bills, start a sinking fund. Okay, you guys, as always, I have a few little side notes that I wanted to add to the video. One is to possibly take back some items to where you originally purchased them from. Amazon and Target and Walmart, they're pretty lenient on their return policies. April and I both did this when we first started our budgeting journey. If we were within that time frame, that item went back. If you can get the cash back, great. If not, guess what? You can still get a store credit and use it for items that you really need later on. And don't forget about those extended times from Christmas. You'd be surprised how lengthy they are. Also, I want you guys to not expect overnight success while doing this. You are gonna have this new you mentality and that is great, but don't forget about the transition you. Give that one some time to get things situated. Show up and do a little bit each day. You will see the progress and it will keep you going. Donate box. Put a little box in the corner of one of your rooms that everybody can get to and just keep dumping items in there that you may come across in your bedroom or in your craft room, maybe in your garage that you just don't need anymore. Throw it in the donate box. Repeat this process for each room in your house that needs organizing, clearing space and refreshing your environment. Get rid of items that take up your headspace. It is going to clear the way for you to focus on your family, your health, and your finances. Let me know in the comments below what room you're going to start with. If you have not subscribed to Two Sister Bees yet, hit the logo down here in the corner and be part of our hive. We wanna help all of you save your money and have fun while doing it. See you next time, bye-bye.